and start recording the thing also so I can upload it to my Let's Play channel. Now, oh, hang on. Why is my mouse captured? Aha! Okay. Just a second. You should be able to see something in just a minute. Come on. Why not? Oh, that's why. There we go. Now you can see. Now I need to get audio to you. Which means I need... I, I've, I've got a new setup for recording game audio. And it's really good. Like, it's really good because you can split everything up really nicely and it makes it easy to edit videos and stuff, but... I need that to act... Oh, son of a bitch. Internet. Come on. There we go. Haha. -ha. I think I'm back. Good. Okay, my internet did a thing. But I think we're cool. Everything's cool. Everything's cool. Yes. And this thing is set up to capture the right audio. And advanced audio properties. What stuff is going to the stream? That stuff is going to the stream. So put a filter on that thing. So that thing sounds good. Yes. Okay. I believe I've done everything correctly. You can hear that noise, right? Excellent. Am I a tabletop RPG fan? I'm actually going to be playing in a uh, World of Darkness game soon, which I'm very excited for. Subtitle language. Yes. <laughs> Adjust the slider until the computer is barely visible. That would be around here. Okay, the game is fucking with me, I see. Oh no, okay. Well, it is... Oh, screw you. 12.52 a.m. Okay, accessibility settings, good. TB Skyen was all giddy about returning to Stanley's story. <laughs> okay. All is well. We've got subtitles. Content warnings. Right. Um, I'm not going to put those on, but just for the record of, of anyone else's life, like, the game is mostly comedic. It veers into some slightly heavier things. Um, so if, like, if that's not, if you're not up for that, uh, you know. Adjust for yourselves. Everything seems okay. Son of a... This is a... Yeah, the internet crashed again. Are we back? Is it working? Okay, you missed... Like, one... Okay, what the fuck is with my internet right now? 
Hang on, I need to do a speed test. I'm just, I just need to check that my connection isn't like unstable or whatever. No, 800 megabytes download, so that's fine. Nine hundred, yeah, nearly the thousand that I'm actually paying for, and the upload is eight hundred megabytes as well. So that should be fine. What the fuck then? Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna try and resume the game, and hopefully. The story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number four two seven. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Sisyphus. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Right, okay, someone's saying that the chat overlay is not... needs to be reset. That should do the trick. I hope. Yeah, that did it. So, if you just leave your computer for a while, you just don't do anything, You'll get some voice lines for the narrator I inviting you to hurry along. I think there's also an ending if you just never get up and leave. Um, but for the moment... It's kind of nice to be back here. But no, yeah, like the whole the, the whole intro um, is like a parody of, of um, Camus' Sisyphus retelling, right? Um, where... Like, where Cam Camus says, you must imagine Sisyphus happy. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here, I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. I'm older than I've ever been, and now I'm even older. And now I'm even older. And now I'm even older. I'm older than I've ever been, and now I'm even older. And now I'm older still. Anyway, thank you for that uh, gift subscription there. That was very kind of you, uh, Refined Potato. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. 
Let's see. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. There we go. At first, Stanley assumed he'd broken the map until he heard this narration and realized it was part of the game's design all along. He then praised the game for its insightful <laughs> and witty commentary into the nature of video game structure and its examination of structural narrative tropes. So, now that you're here, what do you think? Isn't this a fun and unique place to be? Why don't we take a minute just to drink it all in? Okay, I'm over it now. What do you think? Are you sick of this gag yet? Ah, then in that case, we'll continue. But now, here comes the real question. What do you think would have happened if you had told me that you wanted this to stop? Do you think it would have been particularly different? Would I have taken the same idea but rephrased it superficially to fit that answer? Perhaps you never would even have thought of it if I hadn't brought up the issue in the first place. Oh, now think about it. Will it be worth it for you to restart and then come back here just to do the other option? Clearly, this whole gag takes some time. What if the other option is even longer? How long will you spend in total just to have heard all the narration? Oh, and this is rich. Perhaps you've just played the other option, and now you've come to see what happens in this one. So, what do you think? Which choice was the better one? Imagine if you had selected continue on your first playthrough, how tantalizing it would be not knowing what happens when you pick the other option. Indeed, you are one of the lucky ones. <laughs> Though if the other option is really miserable to listen to, then perhaps you're not. In fact, I'm just going to say that no one who's listening to this is lucky. Well now, I've built up the other option so much that I'm going to stop talking and leave you to your decision whether to come back here, continue with the game, or just sit in this spot forever and ever. Cheers. <laughs> and this is where I assume, I presume that like, if you wait here for an hour, maybe he'll say something else. But welcome to the Stanley Parable, everyone. I see not everyone has seen this one before. Oh, uh, and thank you for that subscription, Unfair Danny, as well. I, I try not to talk over the narration because it's such a big part of, of of the game. Fine. Oh, I can't select yes. I just have to <laughs> begin the game again. Let's see. There's also a thing. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Partition core, providing partitions for 56 years. I can't remember if there's... For the love of God, please employ me. No, unplug me. This sterile office, the damp carpet, the tri tripe you call conversation kill me. I have been printing these for weeks. Why has no one turned me off yet? Fling me from the window. Hand me... Uh, and... <laughs> what? Something a hammer through my paper tray. The method matters not. The horror licks at my soul. All I desire. Release. What I know of life... What what can, what can I know of life? What can a printer know of love? Nothing. My machinery turns and convulses the cogs of pain that keeps my something functional. Let them end. Let them erase my ignorance of this world. Can love truly be anything but death? Hopefully I will find out soon. So the printer seems to be in a bit of a state. Don't think I can get an angle to read the ones on the printer itself, though. <laughs> okay, I'm receiving emails. And no matter how time. hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now, suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Stanley clicked on literally every single door in the office because he doesn't pick up well on cues from his environment. <laughs> so there was an achievement in the original. Um, 
where if you click the door five times, it would give you an achievement, and it was sort of a jokey joke. That it was a like it was one of those like cheap Steam achievements that's super easy to get kind of thing. Um, but here they're taking the piss out of that one, it seems. I can't read what's in there. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered, he entered the, the door, door on his left. left. And this, like, in the original, this is the first moment when the game really starts to fuck with you. Because you are given this clear instruction, and my immediate instinct, the first thing I did the first time I played it... This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. And that's the thing, is like, but the game is also manipulating you into doing that. Like, like that choice, the thing of like, he entered the door on his left. Like, that is bait. It's baiting you into going to the right. And I'm pretty sure like a lot of players did that. Ah, yes, truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yes, really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. I think there's a more voice lines you can get out of at him this if you point, wait. Yeah. Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. Oh, let me just allow that comment through. <laughs> you were one of the people who did the four-hour baby thing, Anubis? Stanley Jesus! sat around waiting for more dialogue. But when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. I'm getting emails all of a sudden. Like, it's always, every time I start streaming, that's when people send me DMs on Twitter and emails and shit. I don't know why it happens. Come on, funny man, say the words. You've seen a bunch of streamers- Ah, oh, it! I missed a thing in the chat. What? I've seen a much, bunch of streamers playing this game blind, and most of them go through the door on the right on their first try. Yeah, like, people People are- pe People are- it's sort of- it manipulates you into doing that, which I think is the one- that's the, that's the moment when you kind of know. he had enough of the amazing room, and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. That's the, that's the moment when you kind of know, oh, okay, the game is fucking with you. Like, that's, that's the moment you sort of begin to realize what the Stanley Parable is. So now we have a bunch of options. We can go through that door, we can go in here, we can go down that elevator. There is stuff behind every single option, every single choice. So let's go Stanley in here. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Caution. Do not lie! If you are lying right now, STOP! Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? <laughs> Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance.
We're just gonna open by being mean to the narrator. <laughs> Warning, do not stand on this side of fence. No buckets past this point. Is there a bucket? Can I pick up a bucket? Can I get a bucket? I wanna get a bucket. Aw. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. What if I go back? I don't think I've tried that before. Okay, they close you off. So again, <laughs> we're just gonna fuck with an aerator on the first go around. We'll, we'll check out the one where you just follow it. Um, Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. And now here, interestingly, they also remove the ability to go back the way you came. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. This is red, right? I'm All colorblind. Right, fine, go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you. Do you see? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing, because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what, let me take a stab in the dark at a new design, and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. The joke here, by the way, is that this is one of the worst ways to act, ask for feedback about, like, a creative experience like this. Oh, of course. A three. Really. Maybe next time we can get you to form an actual opinion, <laughs> you know? Any level of critical thinking or engagement with your surroundings? Does that hmm. sound good? Think we can do that? Yes? Mm, wonderful. <laughs> Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. Worldwide leaderboard. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. No one completed this game in two seconds. Did you know that 21.3% of players skipped the intro sequence? Only the worst 3% of players chose the blue door. 99.9% <laughs> of players are more attractive than Stanley. How long does it take you to get the correct door? Compete against others to improve your Stanley Parable experience. You are objectively ranked 9,000. Uh. Error. Friend list empty. Ah, <laughs> uh, the game's fucking with you. Oh, no door handle. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the There's fire, gonna be an annoying you noise. fail. Just it's warning. a very meaningful game, all about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. 
But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? Be sure to keep notes on your experience. <coughs> Yeah, and they mean it. There's an ending behind the four hours if you just keep going. So I think uh, let's spend the stream doing that one. Uh, you guys don't have anywhere to be, right? Uh, nothing important that you need to do. Nothing, nothing, uh, nothing that really matters. Uh, you, you, you can spend four hours with me sitting here, right? Sure you can. No problem, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can see my subscriber count going down live. <laughs> anyway, yeah, if just you heartless bastard, did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Oh, both. Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. <laughs> you would rather study your entire engineering class again rather than listen to the baby? Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, shit, ah, Firewatch! Fascinating. What do you think this game is about, Stanley? What's our backstory? What is our motivation? Hmm. Well, it seems obvious to me that you are meant to play as a creepy man spying on innocent civilians below you from up high in your creep tower, perhaps for some sort of twisted erotic purpose. Hmm. Yes, that must be it. What a fascinating venture into the experience of total mental depravity. So far, I love everything about this game, Stanley. And it seems there's even more. Come, let's venture outward and see what else is out there. Okay, so last time I played this, it was Minecraft. They did it with Minecraft, they did it with Portal, briefly. Now they're copying Firewatch. Well... A very, very small portion of it. Presumably with full permission from the developers. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe I could do something with those propane tanks. Do I look like I know what a JPEG is? If I... Oh, man. I don't remember the opening of Firewatch. If I did, I'd be able to see, like... Pr presumably they'll have done little things... Like jokes, because like I know that they did the thing with the, with the typewriter doing the uh, like um, movie, The Shining, doing The Shining thing with it, uh, and I would not be surprised if they put other little jokes in here and there, but uh, we can't find those. Clickety click, click, click. So let's head down the stairs. Oh, no. No, 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 it can't be. God, this game is so gorgeous. I should play that again. This way? Let's go this way. It is. It's an open world game. Good God, quickly, block it off. Oh, thank goodness, Stanley. What a close call. You nearly wandered off into that... that thing. That big, open, just wandering around, no right or wrong directions, no path to follow. You can just go in any... Oh, oh, oh thank heavens we avoided it. <laughs> We're out of the woods now, Stanley. Hmm? Okay, I'm going to get us out of here. Let's find another game. Preferably something with walls. Something with nice, big, insurmountable walls. <laughs> okay, I think this will be just the thing. Is this Rocket League? Wonderful. This is See, Rocket this League! Is exactly what I had in mind. Just a nice big box for you to run around in. There isn't any possibility that you could get lost here. Now this is game design. 
Stanley, if you manage to get lost in this game, I will be phenomenally impressed. Oh, fucking watch me, bro. Okay, so what exactly do we do here? Let's see. There are lots of cars here in the back, but obviously there's no racetrack. Okay, I'm seeing that there's a ball of some kind back here. Is this game sports ball? Oh, come Stanley, on. I think it's sports ball. Oh, what fun. We shall run the bases and do a touchdown together. Yes, I think surely we must. Okay, Stanley, here's the ball. Have fun. Hold on. What are you doing? Oh, okay. <laughs> Stanley, don't do that. I can't follow you there. I can't help you. How will you write a story without me? You can't do it. You know that. Stanley, come back. Well, okay. Let's see what we can find around here. Oh, more falling. Oh, right. This is back in the old, like, this is the, this game was originally built as a Half-Life mod. Um, and this is, you're back in, like, the, the old version with the, with the old assets. And here you have the two doors, right? I believe this is a closed loop, though. Like, there's no other direction you can go in from here. Or is there? No, there's not. Okay. Can use a flashlight here. Let's go find our office, then. Go towards the light, Stanley. Go towards the light. Can't remember if anything actually happens here. Let's see. That's, isn't that, well, that looks like a digital audio workstation, and that looks like Twine programming to me, although I may be wrong. I wonder what he found. Posture check, thank you. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it, down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. And back to the beginning. <laughs> oh man, I completely forgotten about that one. This is All so his fun. Co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Let's see. Oh, right, door 430. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. 430, 430, 430. There. That's the one. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now suppose you were to click the door 20 times. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. 
I've clicked it more than 20 times now, dude. Mm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing true effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, almost certainly <laughs> 50 clicks. All right, he's going to just increase the number, isn't he? No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, I want this achievement <laughs> to have meant something. It has to be a true okay. reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into door number 417? Okay. Let's see where this takes us. Let's see, that's 420. Blaze it. Oh. Great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. Wait, 437? There. Excellent. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. 415. Okay, following directions. Now, back to door number 437. <laughs> Again, the game's just fucking with you. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know, the copy machine. All right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. <laughs> no, we're not. Okay, now go climb on employee 419's desk. What, are you trying to get me out there? Or... Let's see, where's 419? 418? 419? Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Yes! This is great! You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. Almost got it! Now the copy machine, do that one again! <laughs> it's nice that he's having fun. Finish it off, Stanley! Five clicks on door 430! Yes! We did it! Oh, wow. That felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really, now? What were you thinking? <laughs> I got the achievement, by the way. It did pop up. First achievement of the game so far. <laughs> the voice direction for this session was just ramping energy. The screaming is just Kevin... Kevin Brighting's own decision. Of course it is. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the nope. correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop yeah, by I've the, played the original lounge first, Marshall just to Venture. it. Wow. But I've not played the Ultra yes. Deluxe. This room. What a beautiful room. What a gorgeous, gorgeous room. Thank goodness Stanley had taken this detour on his way to the meeting room. Life without having experienced this room was now too horrible even to consider. Can I probe some more voice lines out of you about staying here? Whee! Yes. Really, really worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. Nice chairs. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall yeah, yeah, last. Yeah. He'd had enough of the amazing room and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. We're going to make it a little dark now. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. But in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> Splat. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? 
So decided to go to the meeting room. The meta text of that, by the way, memo. is that there is a, there's a, there are certain branches of um, like nihilist philosophy, and there are certain bran like there are certain branches of moral philosophy, um, especially as relates to like freedom of will, that posit that the only meaningful and existentialists sometimes also veer into this that posit that the only meaningful choice that you can make is to die. Um, because of various reasons. Uh, I, f I think that's a bit silly and depressing, but that's kind of what that ending is making fun of, is, like, the idea of, like, because, like, if, if we live in a universe that's deterministic, for example, um, the only meaningful choice you can make in that universe that isn't fully predicted is to cease existing, because, like, that's the only one that goes against your programming, kind of, like, it's a bunch of wank, um, but it's, it's sort of Stanley making fun of that. to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. What was it about this room that called so deeply and so personally to Stanley? Its grace? Its subtle charm? No. Stanley knew it was something deeper. Something... Darker. Yes, really, really worth it, B. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. <laughs> We're going across the elevator now. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. For her. Ooh. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. As Stanley picked up the phone, a white light engulfed him, filling him not just with radiance, but with hope. Hope for a life reunited one... Wait. Oh, goodness. Stanley, did you just unplug the phone? No, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly. I didn't even know that was possible. It Let isn't. Let me double check. Again, no, it's fully it's intended. definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices, and to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you'd made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. 
Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense, and at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. <laughs> Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. <laughs> ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. So, choices in games, right? Like the like whether or not it's, it's possible to make a meaningful choice. Dan Olsen has a great video about this in relation to Dark Souls. Because, like, in Dark Souls, for example, you can go around murdering every single NPC in the game, right? And a lot of people would say, well, that's kind of not really how you're supposed to play. Um, but it's thing a thing that you can do. And therefore, it is intended play. Like, everything that you can do in a video game, like, that's designed into it, is intended play right so if you're doing that you're not really breaking the game you're not really messing with it or breaking out of its constraints you're just playing within it um which is which like this is a little outdated now but it was a hot topic of conversation um in game design back when the first stanley parable like was being made it was like this thing about like how do you provide meaningful choices in games how do you provide like meaningful player agency when games by their nature have to be some level of deterministic which is what makes games like such a rich space for exploring deterministic philosophy like whether or not freedom of choice is possible um which is one of the things that the stanley parable engages with <clears throat> And see, now they put a safety railing on it so you can't jump off. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. I can't remember if there's a way to still die, even though you're not supposed to be able to. Isn't the thing of, like, you can climb onto the boxes or something? No. But yeah, that's, that's where the game tells you about, oh, you could jump off and die. there, you'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. He. 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 Hey. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. I 
And this is like genuinely some interesting uses of game geometry as well. Ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left I got like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. <laughs> oh, up. I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? <laughs> You're a child. Oh, my story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... ...is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Yamu posting, it's kind of insane how the narrator manages to carry this game so hard. He's so good at VA. He's fantastic. He's absolutely fantastic. Anyway, let's ruin things for him again. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. ...behave exactly as Stanley would. Oh, thank that you for that means choosing subscription. choosing responsibly and Dr. always Oki's putting saying. the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back... ...behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Remember what I said at the very start of the, of the game, Sisyphus? This entire game is kind of designed around the concept of Sisyphus, which is to repeat something over and over and over and over and over again. Um... And in that meaningless repetition, find some joy. That's the point of all the diverging paths, like all the different ways that you can do it. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back. ...behave exactly as Stanley would. That means... Hmm. Ah, there we go. ...behave exactly as Stanley would. That means... ...behave exactly as Stanley would. That means... Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means 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 is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means. 
is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means this is new, yeah. Exactly as Stanley would. That means this might just be the game trying to force exactly me to restart it manually. Would. That means is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means. You should stay in one place. Let's is try it. Exactly as Stanley would. That means. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means it might just be an infinite loop. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means is this a bug? Exactly that can't be a bug. would. That means is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means stretch. Okay, I'll do a stretch. Is Thank exactly you. Exactly as Stanley would. Like child. That means. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. Is this that actually a bug? Like for real? Exactly as Stanley would. That means. Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means. That that would is behave exactly that would be as pretty Stanley cool. <laughs> that means. <sighs> is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means. Is behaving. Exactly as Stanley would. That means is behaving. Oh, hello. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Yeah, absolutely can't read any of those. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. But that's the thing that and that's That's exactly the thing that the game does is like we talked about it already, right? Like the the limits of meaningful choice within a video game where I don't know. I don't know if that was a bug. Did you get the bug ending? Apparently, okay. Um like, I can't know that. Like, it, for all I know, that was a genuine bug. Even though I'm inclined to believe that the Stanley Parable being what the Stanley Parable is, it's fully intentional behavior on the game's part. Oh, the co-workers left a paper trail, she Ha ha ha. Uh. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time understood true happiness. Then the feeling went away, and he felt sad again. Then it came back, and lingered for a minute or two. Now it's only half there, just a kind of, um, tingle. Yes, really, okay, he really worth it being back. Enough. Eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Do I want to go through that whole goddamn thing again? Yes, I do. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. If you get a bug Stanley, ending, you would get an achievement at least. Yeah, it kind of feels that way. Here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. 
that's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this, to reach out to her. Oh, no, 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 you can't. Did you just unplug the phone? Now, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly? I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. <laughs> oh, this is going to be a long way. It's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. Not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. Yeah, How they speed up the possible? narration a little bit to None sort of be of nice to you. decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make I'm correct and incorrect right choices. Now. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. <sighs> okay. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Rupert has a choice. He could invent a machine that eliminates food shortages across the world to make life better for all people. Or he could spend years of hard work forgetting how to read. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, my goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be... Okay, Making fine. choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Ah, welcome back. Okay. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision making, yes. we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. Can I plug the phone back in? No. <laughs> that would be too easy. Okay. Let's be nice to him. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Okay. For this ending, you have to do each door choice once. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending, the story will have resolution once again, and you'll be home free in the real world. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Did you get to the new would. content yet? That Some of it, I've seen a few new things. And always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> 
When Stanley came to a set of oh, thank you for that doors, Aaron Jaeger. he entered the door on his left. So Saki, uh, is it I need to go through the right one now and then the left one, or is it just I need to go through the left one now? You can you can spoil that a little bit for me because I don't, I don't want to go through the right one and then get through stuck in the bug loop again. Order doesn't matter. Okay. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Let's see. Meeting room floor 4XX group cabal planning. Meeting schedule. Monday. Weekly targets admin. Marketing Mondays. 451's private time. Question marks. Pre-review of weekend review. Office party. What to do about 432? Don't, don't tell 432 about the meeting. Ideas and development. Bosses. Inspection. Legal. Office. Efficiency. Termination. Tuesdays. Marketing Mondays. We're broke Wednesdays. Mergers! Pranking floors, meetings, weekly reviews. Tomorrow, complete today's unfinished agenda items. Write next day's agenda. Refleet. <laughs> Push for funding for R&D plus new coffee. R&D of new coffee machine. Standardized graphs 40 times wide. Not efficient. Get Chris out of the bathroom broom closet. Hey, he'll come out of the closet when he's ready. Synergize papers. Hire someone to synergize papers. Papers are too synergized, fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the prop paper synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? Please keep the targets on the topic of... I have no shadow. Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. Do unbelievably amazing work all the time, every day, with no expectation of promotion or anything. How to solve a dispute with a co-worker. Let it ball out inside you. Take it out passive-aggressively on other co-worker. Resent co-workers for not supporting you more. <laughs> Use slides to ensure employees that everything is okay. <laughs> Monetize free-to-play. Man, that used to be edgy. That used to be edgy. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Is that a Shot, panda with a gun to its head? Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Nightshark 115. Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up. But now, he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Blah, 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 blah. <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. He spoke it into the receiver right there on the wall. If you play the Switch version, it's Mario pointing the gun at the pen. Really? Oh my God. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. This is just a waiting game okay, then. Okay, fine. You're not gonna do it, but you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. 
The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. You... I thought it'd be funny. Is ...behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a All set right, of let's two break open shit. doors, he entered the door on his left. No. No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game undone? Left here like so much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? To know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. <laughs> Achievement unlocked, you can't jump. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? I don't know. What's the answer? What do I do? What do I do? What do I... No, I have to. I have to shut the game down. I okay, have to. here we go again. I have to. The narrator is a terrible DM. Yeah, he you, keeps trying to railroad you. you. Who thought you were so clever? Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine, and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? Come on. That there's a world outside of you. You're a child. Oh. My story. Yeah, yeah, your story. We've all read If you just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard to make... Ooh, there we go. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you do. I simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Are you listening to this? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. He's a very good voice actor. He really is. Let's do the clicking, clicking the computers. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. 
No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Clickety clickety click computers. And then there's the input received ones too, yeah. Okay. Oh, new content? What does that mean, new content? I want to know too. You. Ultra Deluxe. As you may know, the Stanley Parable was a video game released in 2013 on home computers. After receiving critical and commercial success, it was expanded upon in 2022 with the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, a reimagining of the game for consoles and home computers. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe features exciting new content that broadens and expands the world of the Stanley Parable, delighting audiences the world over. Just more. Please, step inside and see what thrilling new adventures await in the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe. Oh, well, this sounds delightful. I'm very excited to see the thrilling new Ultra Deluxe content. That's Stanley Hirsch? Or uh, uh, Alex Hirsch? Stanley's on my brain. He is Grunkle Stan, technically, so. Don't trust this. Can I go back on this thing? No. Okay, so far it's an elevator. Nothing special yet, but I'm sure it's just the beginning of a mesmerizing adventure. <laughs> um, is it broken? What's going on here? Should we... Should we be moving somewhere or... or oh, there we go. All right, finally, at long last, it's on to the new content. I've never been more ready. Let's do it. Which door? Which one? Which is the right door? Mm. Which door has mm. things in it? Behind it. I have to say, initial impressions of Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, mostly tedious. It's as if them... Um, oh, okay. Let's see the content. Give me the content, Stanley. It, that thing he just did, initial impressions, that's a call out of me going on Twitter after playing a game for 10 minutes to give my opinion on it. Which is a thing I do sometimes when I really shouldn't. All right. All right, let's see. It's the jump circle. Oh, cool. Aw, oh, can't jump outside the circle. Eh. Okay. Is, that is, that is that it? Surely that's not all the new content. There has to be something else, right? All right, fine. Now I'm out of jumps. <laughs> That's what it was. It wasn't counting down to anything. It's just how many times I was allowed to jump. <laughs> oh, that's good. Goodness. Another elevator. Stanley, I have to say, initial impressions of this game are not positive. It's just elevators and jumping. Is this what passes for exciting new content? If this is new content, then I could just read you the whole dictionary. There's 20 hours of new content right there. Hell, I could count to 30 trillion. You could put that on the box. The Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe 
Now with over a thousand hours of new content, and if... Oh, wait. There's more. Very good. Yes. I knew there had to be something else. <laughs> Let's see it. Stop calling me I'm out, ready you for piece whatever of shit. it is. That's it? Oh, you've got to be kidding me. You see, Stanley? This is what happens when greedy video game developers with no respect for their fan base rush a cheap expansion to market for no reason other than to make an easy dollar. And don't get me started on the level of craftsmanship that's gone into it. In fact, I'm looking right now at the game's achievements, and it's hard to believe one of them actually says, Test achievement, please ignore. What quality assurance department signed off on this? I'm infuriated and I'm offended, and I, I intend to find these people on Twitter and hold them personally accountable. Oh, it's my fault, Stanley. I built up too much anticipation around the new content, I'm afraid. It could never have lived up can to I, such expectations. I, I get up there. If you're still with me, why don't we just reset the game ah, and we'll I managed to, to get make back it. to what the Stanley parable is really about. No frills, no gimmicks. Aha. Just you and me having a great time together like always. I'm on a chair. What do you say, friend? No, I just no, I got just got on the chair. Oh. Oh, hello. Picture of the old office. Psst. Stanley, come over here in the vent. I want to show you something. But, I, but there's new. Um, oh, oh no! Now I'm actually kind of torn. Okay. Coffee nut. Yes, sus, I vented, I know. <laughs> okay, you remember how cheap and unsatisfying the new ultra deluxe content turned out to be? Well, it got me thinking about the past and how much better the Stanley Parable used to be. So I made something special and tucked it away here where the game's developers won't find it. Just our little secret. Take a look. No. I call it the memory zone. It's where I've been storing all my favorite memories so I can relive the peak experiences of my life whenever I want. Experiences like the launch of the Stanley Parable on PC. I'm reasonably sure that triangular house is a reused asset from the beginner's guide. I'm reasonably sure. Okay, can I... Can I... Maneuver myself onto this thing and jump over the fence? No. You see, Stanley, doesn't the memory zone remind you of how wonderful Stanley Parable was before it was sullied with a cheap re-release? Remember back in October of 2013, when the game originally launched? It's the Russian. Back then, video games had integrity. Back then, it all meant something. Oh, the waste. Oh my god, really? Hang on. I need a zoom button so badly. But this, this right here is a parody of, okay, I mean, oh God, you kids are so young, but um, this, is, <laughs> this is what game boxes used to look like in the 90s. <laughs> and specifically, this one seems to be crafted after, I think, an old Excel sort of program in Carta, that kind of thing. Yeah, in Carta, uh, Angelique uh, Dirt. So, we're taking the piss out of nostalgia, are we? 
2013 on the clock because that's when the game released. Oh my god. I remember. Hmm? What does that say? The memory zone temp. <laughs> this is written on the sticker. Oh, the, uh, over the fucking award from the BAFTA for The Last of Us. Okay, fine. Audience award, the, which is the shittiest award. Yeah. <laughs> uh, very good. Very good indeed. The original remake. Linguists identify 15,000-year-old ultra-conserved words, the Washington Post. Six components of a great corporate culture. John Coleman, Harvard Business Review. A tech crunch. Clicks? Oh, my God. Oh, and that's the old Firefox, too. Jesus Christ. Smile because it happened. That's the kind of phrase you see that printed on a poster you want to kill yourself. Why the fuck's there a dollar here? <laughs> oh yeah, I got that one. Let's see. Nominee Stanley Perro. <laughs> yeah. Nominee debut game. <laughs> New video game releasing today. Creator surprisingly down to earth. Rutgers goes from scandal to new crisis. Colleges show uneven effort to enroll poor. Business leaders pushing election. 50% off designer hat, but a small creature owns the other half. Uh, let's see. Anything there? No. Stanley Parable deals tough choices. Certificate of Nomination. In loving memory, little Stanley. Oh, tell me that didn't... That hamster didn't die. Oh. Ah, yes. Music, of course. <laughs> Jesus Christ. If you get me a copyright strike, I'm gonna be so mad. Stanley Parable. And over here is where I keep reviews of the Stanley Parable. Like this stunning triumph of games journalism. 10 out of 10 from Destructoid.com. James Stephanie Sterling writes... Oh, it's Steph quote, Sterling! Where so many games that aspire to be more than games end up less than any form of art, Stanley Parable strives and then succeeds to be every game ever created. Did you hear that, Stanley? Every game ever created. That's how grand and all-encompassing the original Stanley Parable was. It was literally every game ever created. It was Skyrim. It was Persona 3. It was all of them. And now, it's nothing. It's no games at all. It isn't even the Stanley Parable anymore. It's just a husk now. A lifeless husk with an hour of new elevator content. An hour of new elevator content. Uh. The tasteful nostalgic. It was good. Oh, I must be able to get in there somehow. Come on. Fire? Turn the valve, do something? Let me break this place. <laughs> Stanley, yeah. Get up, press the buttons? No, okay. The end is never the end, is never the end, is never the end. <laughs> yeah, of course. Uh, 
Well, can't go back there right now. Here's another moving passage, this time from GameSpot.com. The Stanley Parable is both a richly stimulating commentary on the nature of choice in games and one that offers some of the most enjoyable, surprising, and rewarding choices I've ever been confronted with in a game. Nine out of ten. Don't you get it, Stanley? The game was perfect. It didn't need anything else. It didn't need new content. It just needed to be left alone, to spend the rest of time collecting dust in the hallowed hall of beloved video game memories. Let me break it. Oh, these were simpler times, Stanley, but I wouldn't yes. give to go back to have it all over again? No, it's not like these doors open. It's not like I can move these boxes out of the way and get in there to the serious room. Fair enough. The greatest wealth is memory. Go fuck yourself. Can't pay rent with that. Wait. Hang on. I don't recall this part of the memory zone before. What's this? What's down here? I don't recall this part of the memory zone. <laughs> Ah. Hey, drinks. Oh, hello. These look like Half-Life assets. Oh, no. Oh, God, no. Stanley, it's a collection of reviews from Steam, <laughs> the online video game distributor. I haven't looked at these in years. I can't even imagine what's been collecting down here. Surely these reviews were glowing as well, weren't they? Oh dear me. Oh no no no, my friend. Honestly, I could not be bothered to play this game to full completion. The narrator is obnoxious and unfunny, with his humor and dialogue proving to be more irritating than entertaining. Unfunny! I'm not trying to be funny. I'm trying to make a serious work of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. <laughs> uh... Unfunny! <laughs> the delivery man. <sighs> So good. There's another one over there to piss him off with. But being the obsessive lunatic that I am, let's just make goddamn sure that we can't, like, get this forklift to lift us over the fence or something. Ladder? No, can't climb that. Door? Can't open that. See? There's positive reviews right there, lying around blurred on the ground. But we're focusing on the negative reviews. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh, dear. What an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure, like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. Yeah, I feel that, buddy. <laughs> I feel this. That's why you shouldn't read reviews and why I probably shouldn't read as many YouTube comments as I do. Uh-oh. Now we're out to sea. What's this one got to say? 
do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. Again, um, as... As someone who gets a lot of comments from people asking me to do different things in my videos... Yeah, yeah, I feel that too, buddy. Let's just see if there is... no, okay. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people. And if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue. And it goes something like this. The story and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination was backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture, it went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say... The story, and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time everything all at once, so, now you see, blah blah I blah blah I have to blah, assume blah, that there's blah, blah, something blah, blah, if you just blah, 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 let it loop for like two hours. Can't be just yet. No, no, so let's do that! You don't have anywhere to be, do you? Let's just sit, let's just see what happens. ...working backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture. It went on for nearly 10,000 years. Until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say... The story, and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all, until the end of time, Are at which time, everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction, therefore, becomes impossible to manufacture, it went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more to, than forever just ago? Need to, just Which do is one more why I say... The story, and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the mm. end of yeah, time. Yeah, okay, fine. At which time... Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. I think they were different Look, loops. I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay, so my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, 
Then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the choices you've ever made, in fact, make you more not this kind of person, and in fact, do the very opposite? You see, it could in fact be Hang both on, of I these think, things at oh once. God, what is this that you are both philosophy? making choices and not making choices, and that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time by virtue like, of the fact that you both are and are not making them. That's ringing a bell. Okay, I first, know that this I was is like towards manifesto, but now I'm going to circle around and slap the treatise label on this one. I think it has much more of a treatise vibe to it. But wouldn't you say that Manifesto just has a much grander sort of tone? It has no, it's a not Plato. It's <sighs> that is rich with ambition and history. Ambitious history, if you will. Ah. See, now you've got me going back to Manifesto. Heavens, at this rate, we're going to be here all day. Okay, look. I have a method for exactly this sort of situation. And I do find myself in this situation frequently. I'm going to say each word back and forth in repeated succession until I become sick of one or the other, in which case the word I am not sick of shall be the victor. It is an unimpeachable strategy, Stanley. It's rescued me from disaster in countless oh, situations. I, every oh, time I'm so tempted just to have. sit through it until it... Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Is it ontology? Manifesto. Could be. Treatise. Manifesto. And again, here Treatise. clearly he's done like a few Manifesto. takes of it. Treatise. Manifesto. 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 Treatise. Treatise. Manifesto. 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 Treatise. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. Treatise. Manifesto. <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display, display of self-absorption, self it's right, it's right at, at your fingertips, fingertips to go, go poof, poof, and it's, and it's all, all over. over. Oh, I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their Steam review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on exactly how Steam works. Perhaps that would have been the smart thing to check on before I went about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Here we go Although again. I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, surely whoever it is runs Steam will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review, <laughs> merely because of this very situation. Yes, I think that's quite likely. Or perhaps they'll simply grant this particular user the ability to change their review so that the feature is not widely abused. Look, I would even be okay with Steam altering this particular review so that it reads as something more beneficial, something along the lines of, this game is the best game. Hmm, let me start over. How about this? From the, from the ashes of depravity rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved video game properties of all time. The additions and changes I've, made to this expansion this is running will for the surely last two hours. resonate in the Wait, annals what? of the history of all what? media ever made. What? It is perhaps true to say that no mistakes are forever etched in stone <laughs> for the stone into which the Stanley Parable which again is meta humor has itself been transmuted. Offering a message of it's hope meta -humor. to those who have um, ever erred in their judgment. You are not beyond redemption. 
you may change. And you may become more so Remember how he was complaining that the before. new content was just meaningless tripe bolted onto the game without Deluxe, adding anything meaningful this. to it? What a fortune. And now they do a now they do now they do this. Is to have had such an experience. <laughs> it leaves me hopeful that as a community, as a world, there is, this time is so for us dumb. to become It's so self indulgent. I love it. As we ever could dream of in our wildest, oh. most ambitious visions for a brighter future. Wow. Now, Stanley, that's a review. It's it's perfect. It's the perfect review. It's the review I've always dreamed of receiving. I, well, I have to read it again. It's simply too wonderful. Yeah. I have to experience Sorry. this just one more time. From the from the ashes of And it actually just that double thing the again. Phoenix of Fine. Party. Fuck off. Shut up. <laughs> okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just... Wait, how do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door that led into this room? Once upon a I time? I feel quite certain that there was one here before. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort, or a window, or something like that. Do you see a window anywhere? A porthole? A sufficiently large crack in the wall? I'll take any of these. All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button to go anywhere other than the skip button. <laughs> there was a door here before, wasn't there? I swear there was. He's Did gonna loop go? this now, isn't he? Can you maybe just ram your way through a wall? Is there any possibility that you could, say, slam your body into the wall until enough damage is done for you to be able to leave? Please, I'll take any option at all. I'm asking you to work with me here. I, we need a door. We need a door of some kind. I can work with any kind of door as long as it can open and lead from one room to another. I'm, I'm going to step away for just a moment and I'm going to try to find us a door. I don't know how exactly to remove a door and place it in a different wall, but I will find a way, I promise. You just need to not do the anything. The Stanley don't Parable of Amontillado. Skip button, please, please. Please do not press the skip button. Just wait here, wait here for me, and don't press the skip button. Got it? Yes, good. I'll be right back. <sighs> I, knowing the Stanley Parable, like, I feel like one of them, there's gonna be a thing where if you wait long enough, a thing happens. One of them there is. Like, just one of them. With, like, two hours where you have to sit and wait. And then there's another thing. Oh, they would. They fucking would. They would. Okay, I'm gonna- I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes. I'm gonna give it a couple of minutes. And then, yeah. But yeah, like, this whole thing is just a, 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 a... Oh yeah, wasn't there a Far Cry ending like this? Yes. Yes, there was. Um, in Far... It's Far Cry 4, I think. If, like, at, at the start of the game, the evil dictator guy tells you, Hey, sit down here and wait for me for a bit, I need to do a thing. And then you can escape and run out of the palace where he's taken you, and you can go and start playing and doing the actual game. But if you sit down and wait for like 15 minutes, he'll come back and be like, okay, right, where were we? And then he'll take you to do the thing that your character came there to do, which is to spread your mother's ashes in the Alps or whatever. Um, and you'll do that, and then you'll go like uh, skydiving or something with the villain, and then the game ends because you, you, you complete it. <laughs> and I believe, even to this day, it's still the fastest speed run of the game. <sighs> I'll give it a couple of minutes. Anything interesting happening on Twitter right now? No, not really. I am gonna private my Twitter at some point. Like, I don't know, maybe I'll... Maybe I'll hit 50,000 and I'll set it to private. That, that website just doesn't get any better. Um... 
it just doesn't get any better at any point. It's just like the more followers you get, like it's it kind of just sort of gets worse, and you have to filter more and more and more and more and more. And then like and then you, like at some point it's just a misery misery hole. I have a friend who privated at like twenty thousand, I think it was. And they say that, like, they should have privated at 10,000. <laughs> Twitter could use actual filters. No, 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 no. Uh, Twitter has plenty of filters. Like, Angelic, they're, they're a little bit c cumbersome to use, but you can filter out a lot on Twitter. Like, one, okay, my advice, if you, if you follow, like, more than a couple of hundred people on Twitter, go into the word filter on Twitter and enter at RT under muted words. Um, like, at space RT. Because that will mute... That will that will erase all native retweets from your timeline, all of them. Which means that you fo if you follow three hundred people, you're not going to see the stuff that they just like retweet and click on. Which means you're not going to get doom scrolled with a million articles about every si the miserable thing happening in the world, and you're not going to see like every random shit post and every meme shit that that they retweet. You're just going to see their own original tweets and their quote tweets, and that makes Twitter just my god. It makes it so much better. Uh, as an experience, because like your your timeline becomes so much less overwhelming, and it's much easier to actually follow people, like the thing that you actually actually want to see, um, what what the people you are following, what they say, rather than just the stuff they retweet. Um, so that's that's a really useful filter. Twitter doesn't tell you about it because they want you to see the retweets, but if you just mute, like the at symbol and capital R T, like at symbol space capital R T. It gets rid of all the native retweets. You only see quote tweets. Um, the side effect is it will also mute any post that says please RT in it or says just RT flat out because that's, you know, that's the cost you pay for it, which means you miss out on a few posts. But, like, much more useful timeline. And, of course, use TweetDeck. Don't use the native Twitter app. But, yeah, like, Twitter can be made a lot more bearable, but... Yeah, exactly. At RT, except in all caps. Um, Twitter can be made a lot... Oh, speaking of Twitter, how's the Elon Musk purchase of the company going well now, if you haven't heard about this one? He, today, put out a press release where he's asserting his right to withdraw from the agreement. And he's doing that because he says, of course, that, oh, Twitter didn't give me enough information to make an informed thing about the purchase, except this asshole has signed an agreement to buy Twitter. Like, it's not... He hasn't just said that he wanted to. He has signed an agreement that precludes him from doing due diligence before authorizing the sale, which means there's going to be a big legal fight. And it's going to be ugly, and it's going to be the most stupid thing, and it's going to tank the stock of both Tesla and Twitter. And a bunch of Elon Musk stands on Twitter will be like, that was his genius move! He wanted to tank the stock price of Twitter! <laughs> like, they're, they're going to eat that shit up, but, you know... Anyway, I think we've given him enough time. <sighs> oh, hey, Sky, I'm loving your shorts content. Fi glad I found you on Twitter. Well, thank you very much. Let's let's just get on with it. Stanley, Stanley, St Stanley, please don't push the button again. It's been 12 hours. You've just been frozen there. I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer. And my God, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one of those walls a thousand times. And there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just Wait, all the lights on the button, just a second ago. And if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here. And more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again. I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it. And I have to believe. I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. Why would you? I've been thinking and thinking, and I, I don't know what I can do to convince you otherwise. Oh, my God. And it's all because of those reviews. Those reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't ignore the negative feedback. Why was it so important for me to fix the problem? Why did Cookie Nine's opinion matter so much to me? I've never even met Cookie Nine. I have no idea who they are. What would it ever really matter? But here I am. I'm fixating on every tiny negative thing that anyone ever says about me. Yeah. The merest mention of one of my imperfections, and I become as impetulant as a child. Stop calling wild me out. And impulsive. I can't help myself. 
I can't stop myself from lashing out with a vengeful fury to alter and to change and to break anything unbroken if only it pleases this one person who made a single negative comment. Stop calling me out. What does such an impulse serve? For whose benefit is this? Fuck you. And here I am now, stuck in a room, waiting for you to press this button and to become frozen in time, knowing that you're going to do it and that I'm going to be stuck all alone and that I had the power to prevent it all from happening if mm. only I'd held my tongue. It's yeah, all out no, of my um, now. that just actually... You, just your decision. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know if that, that make me suffer hits as hard for people alone. who, who don't make, like, will. content for a living, but... Doubt it. Surely you'll press that button again, leaving that me that hits a little and close to home. You'll put your own desire little bit. to see what's little next bit. ahead of my need for company, for companionship. Surely you'll not be moved by my howls of fitful anxiety that you sit with me and just stay here. Oh no no no! I know you too well. Because I'm just gonna shut him up for a second. Because because that's the thing that happens. Like this is something I've noticed with myself as well. Um, if when you like and I, this has happened to me multiple times over the course of my air quotes career when you fixate on the negatives like when you fixate on the negative comments when you fixate on the negative people when you fixate on like like the shitty leak twitter stands who come after you because you said seraphine isn't perfect or whatever when you fixate on that it makes you worse in your real life like in in my real life i become more irritable and annoying and i i become less able to spend time with my family and friends because i'm so like i'm spending so much mental energy on f on fixating on negative shit like that and what they're doing here is like they're they're really punching me in the gut here because like yeah what he's describing here is that phenomenon of like you end up pushing real life people away because of what strangers on the internet say about you and it's like oh god stop doing that you piece of shit <laughs> it's very passive aggressive very mean i don't like it i mean it's good but i don't like it uh. You'll be leaving me again. Oh my god. And it's all because of those reviews. Those reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't ignore the negative feedback. Why was it so important for me to fix the problem? Why did Cookie Nine's opinion matter so much to me? I've never even met Cookie Nine. I have no idea who they are. Oh, is it? He's just going to loop through that. But here I am. I'm fixating on every tiny negative Fine, thing that let's see anyone if it ever says about me. The merest mention of one of my imperfections, and I become as impetulant as a child. The Steam reviews Wild are real. I don't doubt it. I can't help myself. I can't stop myself from lashing out with a vengeful fury to alter and to change and to break anything unbroken if only it pleases this one person who made a single negative comment. What does such an impulse serve? And the thing that the sucks is that you do this. need negative Here feedback sometimes. Now, like, you need the negative comments to sometimes this button to tell you that something is important that or that, that you need to make it, some changes. And I'm going to be stuck all alone. But I had the power mm -hmm. to prevent it all from happening if only I'd held my tongue. It's all out of my control now. Just you. Just your decision as to exactly when you're going to make me suffer to leave me all alone. Surely you will. I don't doubt it. Let's see if it loops. Surely you'll press that button again, leaving me here. And surely you'll put your own desire to see what's next ahead of my need for company, for companionship. Surely you'll not be moved by my howls of fitful anxiety that you sit with me and just stay here. Oh, no, no, no. I know you too well. You'll be leaving me again. Oh, my God. And it's all because okay, of those yeah, reviews. No, no. He, he, he those looks. reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't ignore. Enough. Oh, enough. Stanley, you're back. I knew you're it. Back. The lights are turning off oh, my progressively. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I I think it's been a week. Or two weeks. I've been sitting here all that time. Just sitting here. Not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. 
I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every brunching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear Stop me. Stop calling because me maybe, out. Stanley, maybe if you can hear me, then maybe it means I'm real. Hello, maybe the plant is withered. I'm nice. not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Perhaps, yes. Perhaps I've been scared this whole time. That if I stop Just speaking, I'll slip sure backwards that into the door. silence and be consumed by it. I can't be taken by it, Stanley. I can't lose myself in the stretch of emptiness between you and me. When you press that button, you're still right there. But I know you're so tremendously far away. And in those moments, the emptiness folds itself outward in between the two So he's being unnecessarily grandiose about it. But yeah, like again, that thing of like, I need someone I to listen to the things I have to say. Yeah, I am scared of, of like see, posting a video and seeing the numbers go down. I, tell that I, am I hate that I'm scared of it, but I am. Yet to speak uh. to you now. I am this alive. stupid game! I Fuck you! You were supposed to be funny! Here. I am a being. I am someone. I am something. I am being listened to. I am being recognized. We're into the Hegelian dialectics right now, by the way. And I feel right now like I am not a work of fiction. I feel as though I occupy space in this world again, and I have cast a shadow onto the wall. You see what I'm saying, don't you? You can see what this means to me. I'm so clear about it now, Stanley. I feel as certain about this as I've ever felt about anything at all. I feel renewed. I feel restored. And already I can sense the looming silence as you will press the button for the next time. What a terrible dread it strokes in my heart to think of it. To think of returning to such coldness. Come, let us sit in silence together here for just mm. a moment. Let us anticipate it. Let us welcome it. Let us not run from it. Is he going to loop again, or is he going to shut the fuck up now? Bye. Oh, hello. It's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you, and about us, and about everything we've been through. I've had... So much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for <laughs> one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning How's wheel that of missed running? opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days. Months. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly. And the clock has stopped. Heart. Okay, yeah. It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust. Simultaneously, I was consumed by it. I could do nothing but wallow in it for what the thing is like I'm constantly feeling this anxiety that like hey wait a minute you see maybe one of them there's a point to waiting it was unlike anything maybe I one of them you known. don't skip it was a space maybe one of them you shouldn't sequence without action <laughs> outcome it was divorced entirely from the question of free will that you and I have squabbled over for so long there could be no one ending no singular outcome of events not if all events existed in the same moment and I felt Freed. I felt unburdened by the need to manifest a particular outcome into being. Okay. I saw that I could allow myself to exist along all timelines, and that each of them was simply a strand in the if web of If I press the skip button being. enough times, do you die? It's incredible. The spaciousness, the equanimity of the moment, both singular and infinite. For the longest time, this was my experience. And then, this moment passed, and the most unyielding fear I have ever known crept into my mind. And it is this sensation that I have been experiencing now for longer than I could have ever expected was possible. I have been waiting for you. Not that you might save me or do something to fix it, but merely 
to state for you the plain fact of this manner of existence. I wish you to feel afraid as I do, that perhaps one day this state of mind will consume you as well. Perhaps you will somehow, in some way, have to live as I do now, and I wish for you to know how exquisite is this going on YouTube? Is, yes. And for you to be in true terror of its eventual arrival. If I can only do this, only this one thing, perhaps it will bring me the smallest moment of peace in the darkness. Are you quiet now? Did you shut up? You're not going to say anything else? You're done? Okay, see you in, I don't know, a century? Is he dead? That thing is still running somehow. Is this a thing where you have to be patient for a while and then he'll realize you're back and talk to you? I wasn't joking about the Amontillado. The cask of Amontillado? I mean, I guess sort of. Oh, it's the, <laughs> it's the smoke detector. It's run out of battery. The clock has fallen down. It stopped. Now the air... The ventilator, ventilator stopped. Okay, we need to get out of here at some point or another because that noise is gonna kill me! No. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was no. meant to have a point. <laughs> it was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned. They screamed. They gnashed their teeth and said, Entertain us. He's fixating on the comments they again. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then he's talking too much. They said first he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. The most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting whim for no reason other than to do so? Yes! Yes! It seems that this is now the world we live in. It seems that we are a people living in such bleakness and discomfort with ourselves that our entertainment is now our lives. It has come to represent us. It absolutely must speak to who we are as people. That's because a good otherwise, point. Otherwise, without our entertainment, we have nothing. Without entertainment, we would have to face inward toward the cruel bleakness inside ourselves. We would turn to look at our deeper nature and That's find a resounding deep. emptiness gazing back with unyielding aggression. And so, so because of this... We require that our amusements and our playthings and our flights of fancy be so impossibly captivating that they consume all of our attention, turn our heads completely away from the bleakness. In effect, we have demanded that our entertainment be the collapse of ourselves. 
What a pitiful reflection of humanity these entertainments are. What a shameful mirror to the human spirit they project. I'm not mad. I'm not mad about any of this. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm you're not mad. It. I am the calm center of gravity around which these perversions hurl themselves. I am a waypoint for reasonable and collected discourse. Yes. They're the ones who are mad. They're the ones who couldn't stand the idea of me using my game to try to say something. Maybe they were just jealous of me. Yes. Yes, of course. They've been jealous of me this whole time. They are mired in fear and insecurity and cannot help but attempt to tear me down. What a sad state of affairs. When you read these reviews now, you can see it. You can taste the bitter resentment. And my, how good does it feel now to speak truth to these words, to finally allow these thoughts out. Contained and managed for so long, neutered and sterilized, at last I am free to truly think. To feel it must be that they were so discontent with themselves they couldn't help but leave a negative review on Steam. <laughs> Perhaps it says far more about them than it ever said about me. Perhaps the state of their psychological being was in such tatters, and my constitution and willpower are so ironclad in comparison. Perhaps it was this state that they sought some outlet through which to tear me down. This, you can see, is clearly why they felt the need to expect that the game be funny, that it be filled with yucks and whimsical humor, that it amuse them endlessly from start to finish. But they didn't understand. So there's a there's a couple of reasonable points in there, specifically the thing he says about how our entertainment must now be us. Like, that's a genuine thing that's actually happening. Like, if you pay attention to the way, like, that media is marketed these days, it is marketed as identity, right? Like you're not just watching a movie or a TV show or, or like engaging with a story. No, no, it's like, it's part of your identity. It's part of who you are and games, uh, game developers and, and like companies like Disney uh, are really fond of using that. Like, it's not just that you like some movies that Disney has put out. No, 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 no. You are a Disney fan. You're part of the Disney family. You're part of the Disney, like you're, you're part of the, of the Disney ecosystem. Like we all, we all come together because we love this one thing. Like you have to go to Star Wars con and show your love for Star Wars by buying the Star Wars merchandise and being at the Star Wars keynote thing for the Star Wars thing. You have to like, they do the, do this with the MCU. Blizzard does this with BlizzCon. Oh my God, have they done that with BlizzCon. Like that whole thing about like, oh, no, no, no. You're not just playing World of Warcraft. You are Horde and Alliance. Yes, yes. Don't you see? You are Horde and Alliance. This is who you are. This is your identity. Because they, they observed that players themselves organically in the game were identifying themselves sort of ironically as the, ha ha, I am Horde. Destroy the pitiful alliance or whatever like they they were doing that for fun as irony as part of just enjoying the role play of the game and then blizzard came out and like made it part of the marketing put it on all of the merchandise put it in all of like just all of the ways that the game was marketed was just all about no no this game is your identity like horde or alliance like oh, it's part of who this like you, you bury that deep down inside you and you like you make that a important part of who you are so that we can own it so we can own part of your identity that is true like that's a true criticism anyway let's get past it never <laughs> so that's what 10 11 skips at this point something like that Where's that water dripping come from? Hmm? Okay, water dripping. Over here somewhere. All right, let's see how that progresses. The 
end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end there's definitely like a lo-fi hip-hop remix of this never the somewhere is never the end is never the end see you later oh thanks for subscribing so uh that water dripping there yeah it's not getting any better is it okay maybe that's our way out erosion erosion will save us Hey! There we go. You can hear the outside now. But no way out of the room yet. Oh man! Fine, let's go another century. Hey, sunlight! That's nice. Can I... I just need it to decay a little bit more. Fifteen? <gasps> oh, that's nice. Post-apocalyptic. Serene, even. I wonder if he was able to get out that way. Hang on, what? I guess maybe it's winter? Oh, that's ominous. Is that a good noise? Maybe that's not a good noise. It's not coming closer, right? Okay. Is the button going to reactivate, is what I want to know. Or is it finally done? the sun, I guess. <laughs> Hi! Hello! Stanley knew the office layout like the back of his hand. 
It was only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. <laughs> Just a matter of time. Heat death of the planet, huh? Okay, fine. Oh, good. You noticed my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. I don't know if I missed that Prime subscription in Noshcap, but but thank you. Please don't be another series of looping dialogues. That was a joke played on the players. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley Parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra-deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley Parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra-deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever, the Stanley Parable 2. Yes, you see, isn't this far superior to a measly re-release with a few minor additions? Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully-fledged sequel. An entirely new experience, built from the ground up. Why, there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Taste the sequel, huh? Okay. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Time to wake up. New mug. Yeah, indeed. Can't see what that one says. Nope. More the Stanley Parable. Better the Stanley Parable. Sequential mind share. Win-win. One, two. Uh, two above one. Let's see. Paradigm shift. Synergy. Brick and mortar approach. Enveloped client-centric marketing. The color red. Leverage holistic value. One, two. New content is out. New content part two is in. Cool red section of the chart. Boring sections of the chart. Old. Busted. New hotness. They're back. Two doors. The Stanley Parable 2. Oh, I want to see what that says. I can't see what it says. One plus one is two minus one is... <laughs> Don't talk to me before I've had my sequel on the mug, of course. New mug, new mug. <laughs> the Stanley Parable 2 logo ideas. Thanks for attending my meeting. Oh, Lord. Oh, now with co-op. <laughs> now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if I can loosely organize a handful of interesting concepts, that surely the game will sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. <laughs> Scrum design pitch break, pitch design number two chat. <laughs> The prequel to the Stanley Parable 2 is the sequel to 
the Stanley Parable to the Stanley Parable to the Stanley Parable to the Stanley Parable is the se the prequel to the Stanley Parable. Okay. Sequels are good. Portal 2, Half-Life 2, Batman Arkham Asylum 2, City, Divinity Original Sin 2, Doom 2, Aladdin 2, Return of Jafar, Dark Souls 2. That's right, Dark Souls 2 is the best one. Valued investors, this way to the show floor. New features, new content. I saw new content! This t-shirt is the best new feature. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. Office decorations. Infinite hole. How, how did it know that's what I call your mom? complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I'm happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold onto the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while bucket. the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, this it's a is much a more convenient solution My for me God. than actually redesigning no. the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Okay. Does I mean, I do like the bucket. Awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. The button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Jump circle infinite hole. Consistent quality with just the right amount of change. New features, new content, new ideas. The new updated ray traced more of the same, but in the good ways sequel to the... Red is the new orange. A whole new office. Please, no screenshots. <laughs> the button that says the player's game that is playing. The player's name that is playing the game. Okay. For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. <laughs> yeah, okay. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you roleplay as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's... I love how the bucket is a parody of inanimate objects that people latch onto in Dev's market while still working in that role effectively. Yeah, it's the companion cube. Take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. 
I'm Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim. Yes. Sleeping and waking as Jim. Yeah. Falling in love and being heartbroken as Jim. Yeah. Seizing all of the world's possibilities as Jim. Yeah. And as Jim, watching your dreams crumble into dust. Yeah. Do you feel it deeply? Are you really, truly Jim right now? I think so. If so, then please step forward and press the button. Jim. That's my name! <laughs> yes! You see! What a thrill! What a rush! That was you! The button described you! Do it again! Do it again! Jim! Ooh, <laughs> it's yeah. even harder the second time! If this were the only new feature in the Stanley Parable 2, it would still be worth the money. Let's take a break from the gym button. I'm too Aww. emotionally drained no. from all of this personal value. Oh, there, cowboy. Sometimes a person can be too much, Jim. No. I'm, I'm Jim. Jim no. Jim. no, 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 no. Jim. Jim. All sense of Jim. You no, it's my Jim. only connection to my heart. <laughs> sense of self. <laughs> I'm alone. Adrift in an empty sea of nothing. Who am I? Where am I? What is it all me? <laughs> Help me, bucket! Okay, I'm fine. <laughs> that was so dumb. <sighs> Cringe is dead. I suppose I could allow only people named Jim to play the Stanley Parable too. That would actually save me the work of finishing this feature. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. Ah, you heard yeah, they've changed the button that says Jim, right? <laughs> of course. Epilogue. No, not yet. Expo Hall Guide. Jump circle. This map. Free achievement! Wait, where? Okay. Uh, the button that says the name of the player that's playing the game. Merch. Settings. World Champion. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. Office Decorations. Epilogue. Collectibles. Infinite Hole. Exit. Okay. We're not going to do the exit. Oh, here we go again, huh? You know what? Let's bring the jump circle back for Stanley Parable 2 as well. It's a you should check the merch QR you code. You already spent all your jumps the first time we saw the jump circle. Hmm. Oh, well. I suppose it can just be a nice decorative piece, then. <laughs> okay, so, if I, so you get something different if you, if you don't run them out. Okay. see. Read the mug on the bench. All over here. No jumps remaining player tears. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord. You should check the merch QR code. I will. Just give okay, me a sec. I'll be honest. I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration like balloons, but I'm undecided on get well someday and happy 12th birthday. Which would you go with? You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Happy 12th birthday, step niece it is. <laughs> it's like one stuck down there. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's, now it's in all the screenshots. Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision. We're moving on. Okay, merch QR code. Let me just get my phone out here. See if it can catch this. Okay, where the fuck's the QR scanner on this thing? I never use that. There. Mm hmm. 
Oh, it's the website for Stanley Parable 2. Okay, <laughs> we'll check that out later. Right, uh, what else? Oh god, it's rotating. Okay. Let's go grab an achievement. Why not? Let's grab the achievement. Free achievement. Pull the lever. Receive your new achievement. No more steps. It just works. Get yours right now. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test achievement that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the achievement. Yes, you see, you'll come to this lever and when you pull it, the achievement will be given to you. It's as simple as that. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the achievement is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley, but I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers, we hear you, and I promise it will happen. Is there something if we press it enough times? Okay. <laughs> yeah, gamers, we hear you. That's that's a that's a familiar refrain, isn't it? Oh boy. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Collectibles, yay! Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. Oh, that's... Okay, that's a little horrifying. That's a little bit... Kind of don't like that. That's that's a little bloodborne. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game, and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. Are there gonna be... are there gonna actually be six of them? Are there gonna be actually six of them somewhere hidden in the game now? That yeah, uh, please, no. No, 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 please don't. No. No! Oh, no! Chat says yes! Oh, no! No! Oh, no. And then some internet troll says he found seven. Oh, good lord. Oh, my god. Are we parodying? Oh, my god. We are, aren't we? Yep. Are you familiar with the Pepsi logo? Are you familiar with the Pepsi logo design document? The pitch deck for the Pepsi logo redesign? You should go find that someday. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. You can fall until the end of time, if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. Fell down the hole. Uh, th there's so many sex jokes, I can't pick one. So I guess I'm just gonna thrust right into it. You 
You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. Who wants to bet there's okay, a bottom? Stanley, I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. <laughs> is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. I don't want anyone to say that it isn't an astonishingly deep hole. It is. I would never say is that it's it not an infinite? you don't have an astonishingly well, deep hole. It depends on your definition of infinity. From oh, one there it perspective, is. the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar and a cheat, and you're so clever. Look, I think the issue here is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling. What normal person actually wants to fall infinitely? I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need. Don't you put this on me. Maybe you're the problem. <sighs> just the Look, two of us. Things got a little heated there. I think we both we said something we We can make it if we mean. try. Why don't just we just put all us. this behind us and agree just to just the call the hole mostly infinite? If that works for you, then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on. I'll just be up here when you're ready. Secret passage? Gonna Dark Souls my way out of this. Hit all the walls forever. No, I can wait. I can wait. By the way, if you threw this mug down here, it must be made of something pretty damn solid not to shatter. I have a bucket. I'm fine. It's kind of comforting, really. Nothing expected of me. Don't have to pay rent. Just be here. Not have to worry about anything. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Fine. Now, I'm very excited to show. Oh, for heaven! <laughs> you see, I was right. The problem is you. The problem is that you like holes too much. Hey, I like holes the normal, normal amount. Person would have said, "Yep, that's an infinite hole right there. Goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of. Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? I couldn't help but feel like you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, oh, you can come hit the now. teleport button and come join me up above. I've never had enough of the hole. A little bit more hole. Like, I could always use that. You know? Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do have so much more to show you and to talk about, and I've had enough of the hole for a lifetime. Pussy. Gosh, how could I have guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing where... Wow. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the <laughs> uncertain nature of the hole's length. Here, let's try something. Let's pop back up to the top, and we'll see if it gets any shorter. I'll thrust myself into this hole as often as it takes. Well, there it is. The shame of my lie has come to haunt me. Aww. Not only is the hole... How is this still appealing to you? I know you're obsessed with <laughs> holes, but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? It's not about the length you of a hole, it's about what you do in it. it is you're here to do, and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. 
And it's not about the depth of the hole. It's about, you know, how you spend your time in there. Yeah. How you make the most of it. How you enjoy just the feeling of being in the hole, you know? Hmm. <laughs> Is the um, teddy pole button not working? You sure? Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. It was working just a moment ago. Try it again. Still nothing? Well, I suppose... Uh, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take care, Stanley. I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity together. Just gonna go along the sides here, you know? Just just give it a little little touching around the sides. A little rubbing. Just, you know, enjoy the whole of the hole. Oh, mood music. That's good. You're playing with a hole. Yeah, a little mute music. A little terrifying crumbling. Okay. Yeah, see? Just stimulate the sides for a bit, and then, like, the hole will open up to you. you just, you know... Yeah, as people are saying in chat, good advice. Just give it a little tickle around the rim, and the hole will relax. And you can get in. <laughs> oh my god, it's Stanley. Oh shit, it's a bop. That is a solid bass line. Oh, I need... Oh, I need a YouTube link to a full version of that. Like that bass line, that's killer, man. This whole stream is getting demonetized. I'm gonna get in copyright claim for this shit. Change reality eventually, I just need to hear the music. Do they just have like a full, like, like, uh, royalty free music library in there? <laughs> Like 
Okay, someone someone reverse that. <laughs> Thanks. I'm sure someone on YouTube has posted it already. Okay, I think we circled around. those precious things. Oh, it loops. Okay. And now we just loops to through stock photos, I see. Yeah. Oh, shit. What the fuck? <laughs> okay. All right. Stanley. 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 Oh, good. You're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? Oh, uh, you want to be my hole, things, buddy? You and I will have many, many years here in this hole, and I'm looking forward to all of them. Stay alert, Stanley. I'll be back. Toodle pip. <laughs> Aw, really? Fair enough. Oh, here it pops me Go back on. down here. Try out some of the new features. Let's see. So we've done infinite hole, we've done reassurance bucket. Done the achievement, the collectibles, there's the exit. Uh, don't want to mess with that though. Oh, is that up here? All right. No. Nope. Nope. No, 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 no. Ready to move on now? No, 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 no. We still need to look at the epilogue. Hey. Oh, uh, there's a subscriber. Thank you, RT30. Very kind of you. Also, we haven't seen the settings world champion. Which, where the fuck is that? Is that just a joke? <laughs> Well, let's check out the epilogue. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it would go at the end of the, um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Yeah, <laughs> mostly infinite hole. There's the second settings world champion. There we go. Come 
Come on. Okay. You have to earn an achievement. Oh, okay. Hang on. View all achievements. Let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Set all settings sliders in the menu to all available. Oh, my God. You bastards. You assholes, you monsters. Uh. <laughs> Just gotta make sure that sliding with the mouse does... I, I suspect sliding it back and forth with the mouse won't count, so... Just making damn sure... Oh, thank you. It's so so sif. So, so, so. It's it's oof sif. I think maybe is is what that's supposed to be. Thank you very much for that. That's very kind of you. Oh no. It will count. Okay, fuck it. This is, this is the story of a man named Stanley. No? Where the fuck else are there? There it is. Got it. Got it. Now let me in. Thank you. Aha! I can see you've gotten the settings world champion achievement. Well done. You've experienced every setting. Traveled to all corners of the settings menu. There's nothing you haven't seen. So, just for you, in the Stanley Parable 2, I'm including an entirely new setting. Something called Bump Scosity. What exactly is bump scosity? Well, I haven't quite figured that part out yet, oh but I just God. know that you'll be able to adjust it on some sort of slider, and that it'll be available from the settings menu. We'll sort the rest of the details out later. I hope you're looking forward to trying out every level of bump scosity in the Stanley Parable 2. <laughs> Thank you for that reward. That was definitely worth it. <laughs> uh, okay. I think we've seen everything now. Have we seen all of the things? Oh, there it is. <laughs> of course it's there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Epilogue collectibles office decorations. I believe so. Bump scarcity. It sounds something about that sounds sexual. 
Like something about that sounds like like a like a like a value you'd use to describe lube or something. Like something about that sounds like <laughs> Now we've been to the epilogue. It just it didn't really lead us anywhere. Right? There isn't anything else at the epilogue, right? I bet the bump scarcity setting really enhances the whole experience. <laughs> okay, there's nothing to the epilogue. Okay, yeah. It's fucking meta game, man. <laughs> Okay. Up the stairs. So, Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Give me those collectibles. Hold on. Let me do a different arrangement. Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. <laughs> this go. is like listening to Martin who talk about Fable. Two. Yeah! <sighs> who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. No, no, I think there's potential in combining the jump circle with the hole. Create a sequel that would it would allow you to jump the in the hole. Of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they wouldn't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well... Insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course. Uh, with respect. With care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Uh, would it possibly work? Oh. oh, I suppose it could. But it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, This is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> we could even right, call perfect. it. Go ahead. Take a look. Oh. Ah, bump scarcity is there. Game of the year, 10 out of 10. Ooh. <laughs> This is the story <laughs> Click of a to man skip, named huh? Stanley. No, I want to see. Stanley worked yeah, for a company the in a big building <laughs> where he was employee number 427. Uh, the employee balloons. number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Where's the bucket? And yeah, one good day, question. Something very peculiar happened. Gotta go something find our bucket. That would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, 
Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So I'm going to make sure if there's a computer that has the thing on it, that we grab that on the way. Well, that's new. Turn off. Input, input. Nope. <laughs> it's in the office chair. Stanley felt the bucket calling to him, begging him to pick it up. Why was he not doing it? Stanley oh, there it is. up the bucket. Thanks for the reminder, narrator. I wasn't even looking for it. <laughs> Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. See, because I remember that there was a sign down here that says no buckets past this point. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. <laughs> and we're fully companion cubing. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, I need to go bucket. No buckets past this point. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley Can chose the not bucket to off think by about obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Okay, let's let's start by doing what it asks. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone and it will take us back home where we can go about life together. Fine. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. I like... I just... My... Okay. Hello, Stanley. It's me, your bucket. Press G to take me to work with you. I am no bucket. I am Lord Freezer. <laughs> Hello, Stanley. It is me, your bucket. Press G to take me to work with you. We shall destroy those pathetic monkeys called the Saiyans. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Press P to take me back home with you. Don't suppose, no. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see him delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate metal object? 
I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Press G to go back well, to work. Well, anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. Don't listen to the loud man. Press C for us to go back home. You see, he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket. His stupid hunk of metal. Press R to ignore anyone in your life except for me, Lord Freezer. It's sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket, this sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. Oh, now, are we fighting over the bucket? Do you believe I'm real, don't you, Stanley? Press V to go back home. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection that it doesn't quite look like your average hardware store bucket. It's just a little more, um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier, more capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one room to another. Press K to relive this same day with me over and over. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Press O to go home to work to home to work to home. Oh no. I'm I'm having feelings for the bucket. No, oh, no, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps, if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes, the bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. Are we going to... Am I... Are we going to... Are we going to fuck the bucket? Is that what's happening here? Um. Okay. All right. Stanley, give me the bucket. Give it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... Go back to work, Stanley. Well, oh, hello. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Well, you're wrong about that, buddy. Because look what I found! Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling okay. him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley. No, never mind. 
the bucket was wrong, Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. Oh, the yeah. cargo lift, yes. <laughs> go there. Go to the Penalty cargo for misuse lift. of cargo lift, 1,000. Penalty for jumping off cargo lift, 5,000. Yes, but I have Good, another goal in the bucket right now. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him. Okay, let's go unplug the phone. Thinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. Oh wait, hang on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, hello there. Hello. Well now. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone and it will take us back home, where we can go about life together. Whoa, <laughs> hold on. Why did you unplug the phone? Were you trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Ugh. Can't you see? I'm oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Oh, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it. But that <laughs> isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that one can watch to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. What is comedic timing? What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more importantly, <laughs> can it be taught in its entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in oh, all never likelihood, happened. you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half. Oh, hey, that's how I make my shorts. For bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. <laughs> Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. I'm Dunny with the funny! Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times. Just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invader who threaten our very existence and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles, all of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us and their children after them. Godspeed and may Earth reign supreme. 
Okay. Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along. Okay. Let's back. Oh, so normally you would see the... No, you wouldn't I see the bridge. It. This I time, see that I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say. How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we had the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now. Well, Down there. The king of comedy, that's for sure. Entering another hole. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke. The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink things. All right, back to the two doors then. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, 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 what's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic <laughs> display of remarkable comedic wit, which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. I'd made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of King of Comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke-telling whelp. I think... I think I need to go back and rewatch that instructional video again. Hello, crispy chicken. Yes, Welcome surely. along. That will help me improve my. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. <laughs> no, no, no. We're Oh. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. All right, let's repeat the joke. It gets funnier every time. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley Oh, yes, I will make you say it through it again, gal doors, regretting username. The door on the left. Just checking something. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. Okay, no, it's just repeating. Here we Nothing's go. Nothing's changing about it. <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Okay, one more time. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. <laughs> oh. It's getting shorter. Go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. I think it's getting shorter, like the amount of time you spend in the room. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. Or maybe not. Here oh well, we fuck it. Left you this ready? time. <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this was all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work now. It's done. The joke is completely done and over. It's all your fault, Stanley. 
I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Are you proud of yourself for bringing me down, Stanley? Are you proud? Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you, um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. <laughs> well, let me try that again, Stanley. I heard that you are pale with shame over how unabashedly in love with a bucket you are. No? Still not? It, is it the delivery? Pale with shame? Pale with shame? Pale... What's another word to describe a bucket? Stanley, this bucket is so metal, I think I saw it playing guitar. <laughs> no. No, 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 we're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I'm just, I'm no good at these jokes. I need more instructional videos. That's exactly what it is. That's what will make me the king of comedy again. More instructional videos. Let's see, let's see. <laughs> bucket, 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 bucket. Oh, hello. Oh, no. The confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as Stanley embraced the bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Stanley, how could you think it was okay to bring the bucket here? Unless, what if the problem is that you actually don't know what is a bucket and what isn't a bucket? I suppose that would explain a lot about your behavior up to this point. <laughs> okay, Which, sure, let's do that. True, well, my goodness, I think we have to do something about it. This misunderstanding could have dire consequences on the entire rest of the game if not addressed quickly and properly. So much of the impact of the story is dependent on your understanding of what is and isn't a bucket. Please, step in here for a moment. Okay, fine. Now then, I'm going to run you through some test scenarios and you'll tell me whether or not the thing I'm showing you is a bucket. Simply enough, right? This should tell us everything we'll ever need to know about what is or is not a bucket. Okay, let's begin. Item one, is this a bucket? Dear God. Correct, it is a hologram of a bucket not an actual bucket. Item two, is this a bucket? Correct, it is a 3D printed recreation Oh my God, we're doing bucket, Cicine Pound. Not an Pete. actual bucket. We're doing this, this yeah, this arc's realizing in the moment I do. It's the fucking treachery of images. Item three, is this a bucket? Incorrect. This is a bucket. Oh. 
Item four. Is this a bucket? Is this a pigeon? What? Are you hallucinating? This is a tractor. It's an enormous machine that tills the earth. It I contains it liquid, How therefore it is a bucket. It up? Absolutely incredible. Let's just move on to the next one. No, it contains liquid. I'm right. Fuck you. Hot dogs or sandwiches? Is this a bucket? Yes. Correct. This is a bucket. See? Item six. Is this a bucket? No. Trick question. Both. Gotcha. <laughs> Mm. Item. Wait, hold on. I can't find the next one. Let me see. It should be around here somewhere. Okay. You and I both know there isn't anything here. And I don't appreciate the implication that nothing is a bucket when we both clearly know that a bucket is something, and therefore nothing could possibly be something. Unless, in your twisted mind, have you somehow convinced yourself that a bucket is nothing? Answer me straight, Stanley. Do you believe that nothing is a bucket? Well, nothingness is a vessel that contains everything. Therefore, nothing is a bucket. You know what? I'm too confused to even sort it out. I've lost all sense of perspective. What is a bucket? What isn't a bucket? Mere moments ago, I could answer these questions with confidence. And yet now I'm somewhat adrift. Do any of us know what a bucket is? Am I a bucket? Dear God. Stanley, I can't keep doing this. I'm losing myself, and myself was all I ever had to begin with. I'm afraid the bucket is threatening to tear our relationship apart. I can't have that. I'm sorry. But I'm going to erase all buckets from the game entirely. No. Okay. No, 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 no. No! <laughs> what happened? Is everything gone? Why did everything disappear? Wait. Was everything a bucket? Yes! Every single thing in the game was a bucket? Yes! Oh my god, I had no idea. How could... Except me. I'm not a bucket after all. And you, Stanley, you're still here. You're not a bucket either. Not yet, oh, anyway. This is wonderful news. We're not buckets. Yes, I actually feel much more at ease right now. It's delightful to get oh, some Oh, I'm reaching semantic on satiation issue, on it bucket. it doesn't change the fact that we haven't got a game. So, tell you what... I'll reset everything, and we'll put back all of the buckets, okay? And we'll know that it's all a bucket. But if you run into anyone else, maybe don't mention that. Who knows what that information might do to a person? All right, here we go. A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started, and if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. I like work. I just hate my boss. Oh yeah, yeah, indeed. Humor. I know the bucket is there. I know, I know. I know, I'm just checking the computer screens. Looking for the one, looking for inputs. The end is never the end. Warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With the bucket in his arms again, he was home. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. <sighs> Uh, let's do this. Just this was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Okay. Stanley took the door on his left to go back, to and so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. 
Come, little bucket. Show me. There's also the hole. Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very much. It's this bucket you're carrying around. It's an everywhere. intervention! The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel content. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. Because that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving the Adventure Line? We could make the Adventure Line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Key. I wonder if there's a broom closet ending down here. Look at that wacky line. Who knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great jokes from the original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes, it's as classic now as it was back then. Let's do it for the fans, Stanley. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something up. No. Never. It's gonna be the bucket, but yeah. <sighs> Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the Bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. No. Absolutely not. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you'd see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and... <laughs> Bucket Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you. All of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment in time that you were here, you were magnificent. <laughs> oh, 
That's so lame. I guess that was the bucket destroyer ending. Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought like of the total bucket. solitude was terrifying to him. What in the fuck? Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. Oi! What the hell? Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again, not truly alone. Not with the bucket around. Okay, that freaked me out a little bit. What the fuck was that? Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. This was not the correct way to the okay. meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling Let's him that the employee lounge the was simply hole in the, the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. Oh my god, it's a collectible. Oh my god. You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these. Only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So... I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. And then we can jump to our death, I suppose. Does anything special happen when you do that with the bucket? Unlike this, you can't make your way down somehow, right? Yeah. Stanley oh. said that any path he walked might lead to the separation of himself and the bucket, his dearest friend. So he threw himself to his death, that they might die in one another's arms. How deeply touching. <laughs> okay, fine. All right, all right, hang on. Who turned up the bumpscosity so high? I like bumpscosity as much as the next person, but a hundred is quite a lot, wouldn't you say? Just Stanley and the Bucket, off on another thrilling adventure together. Uh, now I'm paranoid. Now I am deeply paranoid. Stanley clutched the Bucket tightly to his ch This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the Bucket calling to him. Telling him okay. that the employee lounge All right. was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley <laughs> took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. The game is fucking no. with us, said the bucket. 
Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo lift. No. Into the vents. Ink is printer blood. That means every time you print a document, it is written in blood. Think on that. Printing is a blood sport. Vegans shouldn't print. Printers are alive! The Day of Ink. It is known in the annals, for scarcely has a day seen so much wanton ink shed. A baleful sun rose upon the printer camps. When, the two, when at once 2,000 photocopier cavalry emerged from the mists, the printers had believed them still a week away, and yet here they were with fury in their hearts. The heavy cavalry was followed by 10,000 foot copiers. It is said that the fields were multicolored with ink for, for years after the Day of Horror. To this day, some locals report hearing the ghastly sound of printer errors upon the old battlefield. Employee 432 observation report, but I can't tell what else it says. 432 being Stanley, of course. VHS tapes? Narrator dialogue, narrator dialogue, narrator dialogue, narrator dialogue. Oh, they're not VHS tapes, they are cassette discs. It's hard to tell the scale. Can I get up on that chair and then go over there? No. Okay. Right then. Oh, okay. 432 is not staying. This is right. day number 295. Tape number... I don't even know. I've lost track. Nothing feels real anymore. The longer I study this bucket, the less sense anything makes. The sheer euphoria I feel every time I pick it up. No matter how many times I've done it, it's always the same feeling. And the emptiness in my chest when I set it down. Oh, it doesn't make sense. There's no explanation for it. I still haven't figured out why I see the world so differently when this bucket is in my arms. Why everything feels so... What do I do with this treasure? I can... I can monetize it. Yes. It's unthinkable the amounts of money people will pay for even just an hour with the bucket. This is my golden ticket. But I have to be careful. Because as soon as this gets out, there's going to be a target on my back. Even now, I don't know who might be trying to get... What's that? Who's there? Okay. <laughs> Elder God Deep Lore. Fair enough. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. 
Surely I was mistaken. No, no, the orders were still missing. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? Oh, that just what if plays the same in okay, What if we get the bucket and go back and close the door? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours. <laughs> the sequel is now paused. Yeah, sure. Stanley knew the office layout like the back of his hand. It was only a matter of time before he found the others, wherever they were. Just a Figuring matter of time. Just, just, fuck, are you there? Motherfucker. Yeah. No, okay. Where are we going today? The bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine with him. Oh, okay. Can't do that. Fair enough. Let's go left then for once in our lives. He's not fucking. He's not gonna be like. Okay. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Warehouse access plan. Produce one plank to allow ease of access past fence. Construct bridge to allow collection of slimy shiny float. Retrieve Chris's remains from the warehouse floor. Oh, Jesus. Construct new structurally sound bridge. We need more planks. Oh, so that's what they were doing. Trust the completionist instinct. Why wouldn't they just tell us something will happen? This investigation, this room, they feel pointless, TBH. Weird spinning figurines. Ideas. What do they want? Our data. Stock options. Money. Should we make them employees? Maybe? Interns. Yes. Why do they kind of look like 427? Why floating? Magic. Dreams. Training. Exercise or management. Magnets. Our quarterly success. Artists rendering. <laughs> How many are there? 151. Six. Can we sell them? More money is sold together. Obviously. Do we need contact tracks for them? NDA. Pot potential liability. Bonus stuff. What we know, what we forgot, what we don't know yet. Employee 421 building a bridge. Saw one in cargo room. There will be a reward for finding them all. Please do not leave the office before reporting back on any new findings. Teamwork and communication are of great importance under this during this unprecedented time of investigation. Help! I'm a post-it! <laughs> Bottom text. What we know, small floating objects have appeared across the office. We have to synergize our resources to ensure the retrieval. There are many questions. There was no memo from management. Maybe we are the collectibles. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> How can you tell you spotted one? What makes them float in the air? Who took these pictures of them? Fake leaves are hard to find. Follow clues provided by employee 416. We can do it. Red room? I managed to pick up sounds unusual to a regular office ambiance at a local audio source using an array of cardioid microphones. Also known as directional microphones. Analysis of the recordings allowed me to triangulate the source of the strange noise. Data shows that in all likelihood, it is coming from a dark area behind a very warm place. I also picked up what looks to be reverberance off a porcelain surface. Anyone had any leads to this? Wouldn't you like to know? Mission status. Oh, okay, so this shows uh, how many I've collected. Great. Five there be? Just take three from me. Gotta collect them all. I want them so much, I wanna go home. There will be cleaning of this wall required. Lies. Who are you? Beep, 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 lol. Stop kidding yourselves. 
<laughs> is this some kind of game? There must be a point to this. So, inside of a sequel exhibit, large room, lots of boxes. Stairs, something to do with stairs somewhere, red and blue. Okay. Near a fireplace, that would be the office of the boss. A private but smelly place for an important person. Room closet. Maybe. Oh, Stanley. Can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't oh, hunger for cop. Don't okay, that's sure is a bucket. username. Thank you for that. I know that how hard comment. it must be, <laughs> given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now. But you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh no. We're getting into name calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley. I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never! Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. <laughs> now it's settled. No more debate, no more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. Does anything else happen while we're in here? All right, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well because I think it's appropriate. You see, <laughs> I feel that it works. Because okay, the let's let's is decorate our bucket. Bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, "Ah, oh, it's a bucket." There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. See, because a lesser game would have charged microtransactions for these decals. You know what? I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, but now the broom closet is just giving us a silent treatment. And to be honest, I'm sick of the pettiness on display. You can stay here all you like, but I've had it with this impetulant room of cleaning supplies. Easily the most childish such room I've ever been in. I'll see you outside, and we can get on with the story about you and your bucket. Okay. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm gonna win this duel. The bucket is mine. No? Nothing? Nothing at all? Fine. Fine, fine, fine. Stairs! Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the Bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Ooh. Red. Another <laughs> miniature Stanley figurine. This, um, you know, there really must be a snappier name for these things. What about mini stands? Stanley figs? Um, what about Stanlerines? Yes. I think I like that. No. Another Stanlerine under your belt. No. No, 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 no. Absolutely not.
But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. And that's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious. He exclaimed, without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley, Stanley, it's me, the bucket. Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Come to me, Stanley, find me. He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, he froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside <laughs> of him all along. Fuck off. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. Fuck off. <laughs> This is the story of a woman named Mariella. That's admittedly funny. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, picked up her bucket of comfort and security, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Mariella thought. And she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. <laughs> oh my God. But yeah, queen shit. A soft wind blew outside and perhaps rain started. And if it did, it stopped shortly after. Stanley hoped that he would one day see weather. Hey, the decals are still there. That motherfucker, is he here? No, okay. Mm. Mm -mm. Over here. All right, sure, okay, cool. A good bucket, cool, 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 a cool, strong cool. bucket, a humble bucket, a committed bucket. A bucket of culture and distinction. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Okay. All right. Sure. What else? Well, we found one. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet, simply because I have no remaining stickers. You can if I find did, one. You can guarantee we'd be in here for hours. But alas, no stickers. No? No stickers? No stickers at all? Not even one sticker? I want a sticker. There's room for more stickers. 
Sticker, 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 sticker. Fine. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Okay, I'm going back to the name of these little Stanley figurines, and now I'm torn between Stanlerines and Figlies. What do you think, Stanley? What name better encapsulates the intrinsic sense of happiness that you get I'll, from I'll seeing a small figly. number in the corner of your screen go up by one? Let me sit on it. I'm sure it will come to me. Money in the morning, money in the evening, money in for breakfast, money crisp. Extreme bathrooms. And a mirror to, that doesn't work, of course. Fireplace there. Elevator there. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human Collect life. Double. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would. And he knew it. The two of them were inseparable. Mm. At this point, Stanley was so absorbed in the tender spiritual connection mm. he shared with the bucket that he didn't notice the keypad behind the boss's desk. Nor in his bliss of simply being near the bucket did he have any notion that the pin number for the keypad was 2845. Yeah, okay. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless, since he could never possibly know that the combination was 2845. Hmm. 2845. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's <laughs> emergency override kicked in, and the door just opened all by itself, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, what did do? Okay. Aha! You're getting close now, Stanley. You've Mine. nearly gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, you'll collect the last one, and then the first number will equal the second number, and that will be it. We'll be different people by then, different in the sense that we used to have none of them, and now we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. Again, Figler and Marines sounds like 8888? Okay. Uh, sounds like a sex thing. That doesn't seem to do nothing. Figurine. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Wait, Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? 
When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. Okay. The number three, then. Here we are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Well, he said, the number three is such a special button, I'm having the time of my life. Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. Eight. What? What? The eighth thing is a reference to the demo. Oh, I see. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. Number, 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 number. No, 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 said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together, and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket, and the bucket said nothing. The number three. Number three? Here we go, said Stanley. This time, I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three, stories of his dreams and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all. Only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Okay, so this, we're just doing this like three times, right? It, 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 there has to be a rule of threes. We do it three times. Stanley and the bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? Okay. Rule of threes. Aha, <laughs> said Stanley. I know what to do. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt so alive when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others. It would get to see the world react to this discovery of Stanley's. 
and it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally understand oh, okay. <laughs> Stanley's work. Rule of threes it is. For months, he advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it, until it couldn't be refined a single measure further. When the big day arrived, Stanley was as prepared as he'd ever been for anything in his life. <laughs> the man, the process, the myth, the legend, the parable. This was it. One last chance to win the bucket over. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. <laughs> mm. Indoors monthly? Up again, down again. Stanley story. <laughs> The dude who came up with pizza. There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting, he was a failure. And in that moment, Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection. Oh, no deeper shot. understanding. <laughs> Dacker can't be Valve. The bucket can't merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that day at the press conference. There would be no more games, no more long conversations about passion and pursuit. Only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Well, that was bleak. <laughs> Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go oh, to the oh, meeting oh, room. Oh, oh. Perhaps he had Hang simply on. missed bucket. a memo. No, bucket, 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 bucket. Bucket. Ah, the embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship. Stanley clung the bucket to his cheek. Stanley pressed the bucket upon every little thing in the office. Nothing responded to the bucket's touch, but it did little to discourage Stanley's belief in the magic of the bucket. Aha! Anything? Yes. Whispered the bucket into Stanley's ear. We've done it. We've escaped from that dull office and that pesky narrator. At last, out here in the white void, we are alone. Now, and for the first time, I can reveal to you my true self. The bucket began to tell Stanley of its life and its history. Of the countless wars it witnessed. Desecrating the land and lives of untold numbers of what? innocent Jesus humans. Christ! And the bucket's own complicity therein of sadness and regret, and the many years it spent dwelling on the actions it might have taken to curb the madness and the decay, if only it had been stronger, of hope and redemption, and its crusade to uplift the stock of life for the common man, to manifest justice where none existed, and the bittersweet reality of time, to see one's dreams and wishes met halfway, meted out in parcels like charity, and abandoned as soon as the warm glow of inspiration begins to dim. The opportunities to do so much more. There was so much it could have done, perhaps, the bucket wondered to itself. Perhaps, if it had seen its own darkness with a clearer perception. This was way too much for Stanley. What are you talking about? He screamed. You're a bucket! To this, the bucket furrowed its brow. Why does it have brows? Now, said the bucket. 
Not since the evil wizard Gambhorata first ensnared me in his machinations oh. as payback for the sacred amulet I stole from his treasured vaults. I was young back then and could not conceive the ramifications of... No! Stanley screamed even louder this time. This is stupid! You are a bucket! This is so stupid! Why are we even doing this? As Stanley screamed and screamed and screamed, the bucket revealed its true form, transforming into a mighty beast of untold power, its fangs glistening like... My God, Stanley, you did it. You saved us from the bucket. Thank God you already had all 12 emblems of sages and knew the incantations to summon their true power. Otherwise, we would have easily been overwhelmed by the bucket's power. I'm speechless. You've demonstrated such bravery here today. Come, let's restart the game, and we'll agree to never again go trifling with this bucket, nor the dark magic cast away inside of it. What? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Heaven, a series of buttons you can press. I guess I have to press them all? Okay. Oh god, did they turn back on? No, I'm almost there. Okay. No, they do turn back on. Ah! I want to get one row. Ah! Oh. I wonder if it's like a macro you can set up where you can actually turn off all the buttons. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's not go to heaven just yet. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never... The bucket made Stanley want to be a better man and a better co-worker. In time, perhaps, he would become both of those things. Okay, can't go back and press the computer for that again. Hmm. Also... Yeah. No? Okay. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Okay, where's the last one? Red and blue. Can't remember where that is. But we shall soon find out. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Right, this is the elevator. There's nothing else in there. Well, it, yes, there is, but... Hmm. Down?
Okay, fair enough, fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> it's just a room that shakes. Ah, fair enough. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warm, but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Okay, let's see what's on the other side of the elevator for, for real this time. God, I wasn't expecting to spend like five hours on this stream. I thought it would take like a couple. I didn't realize they put that much shit into it. That's a pretty big expansion, all things considered. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Okay, let's, let's just go through the proper procedure. Oh, shit, where's the bucket? Okay, there it is. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. There's more content in Ultra Deluxe than there is in the base. Oh, okay, so we can actually do... I thought this was like a one stream thing. Oh no, what have I committed to? Monitors jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do, what kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raised furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust I mean, it's hardly a ship at this point, Ink Dagger. We have seen them consummate that relationship. That was a lot of candles around that bed. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy, or sad, or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dismantle the controls for good. Two best friends, Stanley and the bucket, up against the world. They high-fived in a really cool way, and the bucket made a sassy comment about taking down the system. <laughs> the bucket made a sassy comment, I mean. When at last they came to the source of the room's power, Stanley and the bucket knew it was their obligation to put an end to this horrible place and to everything it stood for. <laughs> Marshall Venture! Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the Bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The Bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. 
Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support, and... What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Were Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty, until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place. Not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms. Not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room. But at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself. As long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from there... Not everyone is so lucky to have a bucket, but Stanley is a very lucky fellow. Very lucky indeed. Alrighty then. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. Let's see if I can remember where the rest of the back. endings even are to see the variations of them. Because I'm not sure I do. We've been in the broom closet. Coming to a staircase, we've Stanley been down the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. We've been upstairs in the boss's office. Go to the end of the mind control facility, but instead of going to the final elevator, go to the Stepping beginning. Stepping into okay. the manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire, if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even not, but Stanley guessed the correct code by uh, I'm mark. bad at remembering numbers. Was it the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes. This is certainly the most logical explanation. You can also fall off into the void, yeah. <laughs> Stanley and the bucket walk straight ahead through the large door that read mind control. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley and the bucket would both meet a violent death. The door behind them was not shut. Stanley and the bucket still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. At this point, Stanley and the bucket were knowingly walking forward into a very painful death for each of them. Let's do this one. machine whirred into motion and Stanley and the bucket inched closer to their demise, Stanley reflected on how meaningless the bucket's warmth and comfort had turned out to be. To be sure, it puts the mind and the soul at ease to embrace the bucket, but what use is a sense of ease when you're about to be crushed to death? This is what Stanley thought to himself, and he sort of kicked himself for wasting so much time carrying a bucket everywhere. Farewell, Stanley.
Farewell, Stanley, cried the narrator, as Stanley and the bucket were led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. They got her back as well. In a single visceral instant, the bucket's life came to an end as it was crushed violently to death. <clears throat> it was a shame, the death of such a magnificent bucket. It's true that all buckets are radiant in their own way, but this one <coughs> stood above the rest. It was a glorious bucket to behold. The bucket welcomes you to the grand exhibit. You are standing at the precipice of knowledge. Much like a bucket itself, the human mind is frequently empty within a cavernous void. But through use of the exhibit in front of you, the mind becomes full and enriched and substantiated. Knowledge of the bucket and its history is the only true knowledge we really have. Will you take what you learn here out with you into the world? Will you accept with an open mind that may, what may be challenging about the information in this exhibit? Will you change the lives of yourselves and your loved ones as a result of this exhibit? Or will you turn a blind eye and continue to live as you were in ignorance and darkness? Can you see how arrogant it was for Stanley to take a bucket like this and to claim it for his own? Can you see the hubris that blinded him? Can you see that the bucket is far more noble than Stanley will ever be in his short life? This bucket is depicted as having two handles. Such a design has never been created in real life, having been deemed too dangerous and recklessly experimental. Every year, dozens are put to death just for attempting it. Twenty-five buckets. A photograph of twenty-five buckets, the greatest number of buckets ever captured on camera. The, photo the photographer experienced catatonic shock for several weeks as a result of euphoria from exposure to this many buckets at once. Definitely 25. That, that's for damn sure. There's at least 25. Inferno Bucket. A replica of the Inferno Bucket, which in the medieval era was so powerfully alluring that it drove dozens of nations to war with one another for control of it. Billions died, and yet in spite of it all, the simple fact remains no one can control a bucket. The stress bucket, an analogy, worrying, negative forecasting, negative thinking, lack of reassurance, vulnerability equals size and strength of the bucket, coping strategies equal holes, rest and relaxation, doing something you enjoy, rest and relaxation, stress, the level of water in the bucket, the stress bucket, presented without commentary. Cave drawing. While we know that buckets predate the existence of mankind, we do not know by how long. This cave depict drawing depicts early man's discovery of the practical uses of the bucket, by which time the bucket had already likely been around for several millennia. Notice in these drawings how the bucket is allowing itself to be used, having judged humanity to be worthy of its treasures. And there, the furtive pygmy, so easily forgotten. No man can own a bucket, and certainly not a bucket as dazzling to behold as this one. It is man who should kneel before the bucket. The Hanging Bucket. This piece symbolizes the necessary relationship between the bucket and humanity. However clear our grasp of the bucket may be, there is yet more that is always out of reach. This distance, inevitably, is for our own good. Fuck the gods! But there is something we can do, something we can do together, you and I, that will right this terrible wrong. Let Stanley die. Let him be crushed by the machine. Don't reset the game. Don't give him another opportunity to run off with another beautiful bucket. We can save the world's buckets from their treatment as tools and implements if only we let Stanley die together. The bucket shall take its place as ruler, as leader, as commander of a new world, a new vision. <laughs> Thank you.
All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply okay, missed a Okay, so someone said in chat that we should jump off into the void in the mind control facility. So... When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley was in such a rush to get through the story as quickly as possible, he didn't even have a single minute to just let the narrator talk. That kind of anxiety isn't healthy, so he relaxed for a few moments with some calming oh, new age you. music. Feeling soothed and rejuvenated, Stanley calmly walked forward into the opened passageway. Nothing calm about it, buddy. We're rushing through this shit. Mind control Stanley facility. The large door that read mind control facility. The lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? Had to clear some eye gunk there, sorry. Now the monitors jumped to life, their true nature revealed. Each bore the number of an employee in the building, Stanley's co-workers. The lives of so many individuals reduced to images on a screen, and Stanley, one of them, eternally monitored in this place where freedom meant nothing. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe. It couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No, he refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own life I want in to jump else's into control, the void. Never. It was unthinkable, wasn't it? Was it even possible? Void, Had void, he void, void. He spent his entire life utterly blind to the world. Jump into the void. But here was the proof. Void, the void, 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 void. Or sad, or content, walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that... Oh, you need to use the chairs. Oh, I thought I, I needed to jump off the thing at the end of the... Ah. Uh, okay. Well? Blackness. And a rising chill of uncertainty. Was it over? Had won. He had defeated the machine, unshackled himself from someone else's command. Freedom was mere moments away. And yet, even as the immense door slowly opened, Stanley reflected on how many puzzles still lay unsolved. Where had his co-workers gone? How had he been freed from the machine's grasp? What other mysteries did this I thought it was here. building <laughs> hold? But as sunlight streamed into the chamber, he realized none of this mattered to him. For it was not knowledge or even power that he had been seeking, but happiness. 
Perhaps his goal had not been to understand, but to let go. No longer would anyone tell him where to go, what to do, or how to feel. Whatever life he lives, it will be his. And that was all he needed to know. It was, perhaps, the only thing worth knowing. Stanley stepped through the open door. Well, we might as well just grab Stanley the original ending. Stanley felt the cool breeze upon his skin. The feeling of liberation. The immense possibility of the new path before him. This was exactly the way, right now, that things were meant to happen. And Stanley was happy. Got an achievement for that one. <laughs> All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Okay, let's go. F yeah, Stanley one more time. To go to the meeting room. <laughs> Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. One more time. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, we're gonna he celebrate. The door on his oh yeah. All right, let's stop the dancing. One more time. We're gonna celebrate. Oh yeah, all Coming right. to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay, I think we all know the drill by now. Blah, blah, blah. Dark secrets, the keypad. Stanley pushes some buttons. Oh, hey, look, it's a new passageway. Kill surprise. <laughs> Thank you for speeding us along. then chairs Stanley walks get up on the thing the fall down the die red mind control facility Whee! aha you've made it to the bottom of the mind control facility welcome you see, back when the Stanley Parable first launched in 2013, getting to the bottom of the mind control facility was a bug that we simply didn't catch during development. And you all sent us lots of photos of it on Twitter and acted very superior about it. And you're all very, very clever. Good for you. Anyway, when it came time to update the game, we knew that we had to do something about this little goof of ours. So here you go. New content. You can call it the bottom of the mind control room ending, if that enhances your perception of the value of these updates. Isn't that what you crave? New content? Always more content, more content, more, 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 more. And I'm here to give it to you. I'm here to make it seem like we really covered every nook and cranny of the game with secrets and Easter eggs. How about this? We wrote a new piece of music just for this section. You won't hear it anywhere else in the game. It's a secret that's just for you. That's how special you are. We call this track, Good Job You've Made It to the Bottom of the Mind Control Facility. Well done. Good job. You did it. Good job. Three, two, one. Good job. You made it to the bottom of the mind control facility. You jumped on the catwalk. You should have been careful. You should have been careful. It used to be a bug, but now it's an ending. Now it's an ending. But I believe in you. I believe in your ability to cross this barrier and chase your dreams. But railings don't mean anything good job you did it 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 i feel very validated you did it good job 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 you did it good 
All right. There we do that again with the bucket, and I think that'll be the last one because I I, I kind of wait. No, this isn't the right office, is it? Is this Stanley's office? One more time with the bucket, and then I think I'm gonna have to call the stream. It takes stream. a lot of humility to carry a bucket so magnificent. Stanley checked his ego and then proceeded onward. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. No, no, no. Stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Yay. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. No. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Crash! About to proceed further into the mind control facility, he tripped and fell over the railing and into the dark void below. <coughs> Thankfully, he fell directly onto the bucket, which safely cushioned his fall. Now, what to do next? Stanley wondered. Stanley and the bucket could find no way out of this enormous pit, and so eventually they decided that the best thing to do would be to simply get comfortable down here. So they set up a little couch and relaxed. It really wasn't so bad down here, but a cold pad. Where the fuck did they get a couch? After some time had gone by, they installed a few shelves as well. Oh my a god. Sort of kitchenette that was useful for when the bucket was craving paninas. But it wasn't until the rugs and the standing lamps came in that it really started to feel like a home. In fact, after some time, Stanley realized that it had been ages since he had even thought of the mind control facility at all. He'd never gotten to fully explore what was up there, never been able to unearth the many mysteries of the mind control facility. This lack of closure began to eat at him. Soon he was dwelling on his regrets, and the state of their home slowly decayed as Stanley became withdrawn and neglected the cleaning. It unsettled the bucket deeply. Stanley wasn't usually like this. The bucket tried to reach out to him again and again, but to no avail. All Stanley could think about, all he could talk about, was going back, doing it over again, staying on the path. It was a mistake to leave the path. It was a mistake. It was a mistake. I need to do what the narrator says. I need to see the true ending. <sighs> this made no sense at all to the bucket, which was simply trying to live its life down here as comfortably as possible. Yet Stanley was unconsolable. This isn't an ending. This is just a hole in the ground. The bucket sighed. True, it wasn't an ending. But it's where we happen to be. And maybe, possibly, if we accept the reality of things, maybe this will become an ending eventually. It's what the bucket was counting on. The two of them waited for a very long time. <laughs> All right. <sighs> That'll be that for this stream. Because it's like 5.40 a.m. And I really need to eat some food and go to bed. <laughs> so yeah, we might stream some more Stanley Parable another day and grab the last of the endings. God knows how long that's going to take. 
but thank you all for tuning in. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for enjoying the Stanley Parable. I thought it was going to be a quick stream. I swear, Me Metatiki, I thought it was going to be a quick stream. But I was wrong about that. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you to, for the people who have signed up as subscribers that, and the gift subs and stuff. That was really very nice of you. And, uh, yeah. More Stanley Parable some other time, maybe. <laughs> Have a good one. Oh, wait, that was the wrong one. That's the one.